Hello, back again with another video for the Moog Matriarch. In this video, we're going to take a look at LFOs. Specifically, we're going to look at three different ways to get a few extra. I guess you could call them hidden LFOs on the Matriarch. The idea for this video is from a subscriber who left a comment on one of the videos, which inspired me to put this together. So thanks, Mark. I'll go through each idea and then improvise a patch using the new concept. This patch, which reminded me of late 70s horror film soundtracks, inspired me to put together this little demo we're listening to. And of course it uses one of the hidden LFOs. There's an index in the description if you want to skip around. Patch diagrams can be found on my website. There's a link in the description. But before we get to the walkthroughs, here's a little sample of the three patches I came up with this time. Alright, let's start with a very basic and quick overview of the LFOs on the Matriarch. In the mod section we have five LFOs. Well, that's not true. We have a single LFO which is capable of producing five different wave shapes. There are three common modulation destinations hardwired with attenuators to control the modulation amount, oscillator pitch, filter cutoff, and oscillator pulse width. Pulse width, of course, only affects the two square waves. But we also, of course, have a CV out for the LFO. There's a sample and hold out as well, but I'm not going to get into too much detail about that in this video. I covered it a long time ago in another one. Lastly, the mod wheel, of course, controls the global amount of modulation for all of these hardwired destinations. Oh, and I almost forgot, there is a second LFO in the utility section, which is capable of triangle and square waves, and it, of course, also has a rate input. I've had a lot of questions about the rate and sync inputs for the LFOs on the Matriarch. Again, not going to get into too much detail about those in this video, but I will remind you that these are analog LFOs and do not have the same tempo sync capabilities as a digital LFO. But for now, just remember the rate input will not totally sync the LFO to a tempo, but it will try to reset its cycle every time it receives a high trigger. It's best to think of the rate inputs as an invisible hand which is turning the rate knob and altering the rate of the LFO in relation to an incoming signal. So let's have a listen to these LFOs. I'll use this uh, molt cable to patch into my scope so we can see and into an oscillator pitch input so we can easily hear what they sound like. And here's our sine wave. And a saw. An inverse saw or ramp. And we have a bipolar pulse. It can be changed to unipolar if you want in global settings. Oh, let's change the octave of this oscillator so we can hear that a bit better. And we've got a step triangle, which is a bit of a weird one. At certain tempos, you may be fooled into thinking it's random, but it is actually a triangle LFO. It's linked to the tempo of the arpeggiator. So let's see if we can get it 
There we go. Now you can see that it's just, well, like they say, a stepped triangle. I do use this one in situations where I want random modulation quite often. It is very similar to a sample and hold. The only difference is it's sampling a triangle wave instead of noise. And lastly, we have a slewed or smooth random wave. Let's speed that up a bit so we can hear it. Cool. Slewed modulation is probably not the best choice for, say, pitch modulation in most situations, but uh, can be useful for tons of other things. Okay, and I said we have a sample to hold. There it is. The sample on holdout has a range of plus or minus 8 volts, which you think would be more than enough for most situations. But I find I usually have to offset or amplify the sample and hold on the matriarch to get what I want. I should revisit the sample and hold in another video. Okay, let's check out the uh, utility LFO. We'll start with the triangle wave. Yep, there's a the triangle wave. Cool, let's try the square. And this square pulse is also bipolar. Unlike the uh, square LFO in the mod bay, this one cannot be set to unipolar. Okay, that covers the onboard LFOs. Let's get on to the whole point of this video and find some other things we can use as an LFO. And I'm going to start with the filter. So we know the filter will self-oscillate and produce a sine wave if we crank up the resonance. And there's our sine, obviously at audio rate because we can hear it. Let's take a look on the scope. Oh, before we go too much further, we should make sure we know what an LFO is. So, what is an LFO? LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. So, as we just saw, an LFO is a wave, but its frequency, or rate, which also governs pitch, of course, is usually below 20 Hz, at least at its low values. The normal frequency range of a young, healthy person's hearing is around 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz, or 20 kHz. So obviously, if the frequency of an LFO is below 20 hertz, we're not going to hear it. But we can, of course, use it to modify things we can hear, and that's what we do in synthesis all the time. According to Moog, the rate of the LFO in the utility section, for instance, is 0.7 hertz to 520 hertz. 0.7 hertz is well below the hearing of any human, but 520 hertz is in the audible range. In other words, we can hear that frequency, so the LFO will have a recognizable pitch. 520 is, I believe, around C5 on the piano, maybe a little flat. At the slowest speed, we can see movement. Obviously, we can't hear anything. And around 12 o'clock, we're starting to hear some clicks coming up into the audible range. All right, now we've obviously got a VCO. Let's check the frequency. Mine seems to only get to around 440, which is an A. Actually, it sounds more like a B flat, halfway between the two. Just so you know, we can amplify those rates by sending a CV offset to the rate input on the LFO and get a little higher. The manual says all the way up to 620, which is around a minor third above the C, but again, mine doesn't seem to go that high. I'm getting a B or around 495 hertz or so, I think. Unfortunately, applying a negative offset will not get this LFO to go any slower. Super slow LFOs are very useful in ambient music and that sort of thing. So to sum up, an LFO is basically just the same as a VCO, or voltage-controlled oscillator, but with a much lower frequency. In some of my other videos, I've already demonstrated how to get an LFO to behave like a VCO. So the question is, can we get a VCO, or a wave in the audible range, to slow down enough to act like an LFO? Okay, back to our resonant filter producing a sine wave. Let's see how low this will go. Okay, we can't hear it anymore. I'll bring it up just a little bit. But that could mean that it's acting as a low-frequency oscillator, so I'm not crazy about this scope. 
I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit and see. Oop. Well, that's a little better. Definitely still have a sine wave, but it's in the audible range. Zoom out even more. Yeah, there's our obviously a sine wave. But again, it's in audible range. We can obviously hear it. Let's turn it down more with this scope setting. Okay, it's still there. The amplitude is just much smaller. But it's still an LFO. It's just not the slowest one. Okay, so we're going to build a patch then using our filter as an LFO. So first step is to remove the filter from the audio path of the synth if we're going to use it as an LFO. So I'm patching the mixer out into a molt. So the molt is going to act as just a unity mixer and out of the molt directly into the VCAs. The VCA inputs on the matrix are not normal. I thought they were, but I was wrong. So to get signal on both left and right channels, I have to patch into both of them. Could, of course, just run a mono patch. The oscillators, of course, are still going to be mono, but I will definitely be using stereo delay, so want both sides. Okay, next step is to get our um, new filter hidden LFOs running. So I'm going to patch out of the VCF1 input into an attenuator. And out of the attenuator, I'm going to go oh, gonna get another cable first. Sine waves are great tools for additive synthesis. So for things like amplitude modulation or frequency modulation of a sound wave with little harmonic content. So I'm going to use our sine LFO to modulate the frequency of a triangle wave. Actually, let's hear it without modulation first. Okay, there's the triangle wave. And let's patch into the linear FM modulation. And you hear it. Now, this isn't anything new. I've actually done this in a few videos. But let's see if we can get really low. There we go. So it's not slow enough to get a nice tasteful vibrato or tremolo like you can get with an actual sine LFO, but we can get a more dramatic over-the-top vibrato, like a singer or saxophone player from the 1920s, or the sound of Aunt Beru's weird kitchen appliance in Star Wars. Anyway... So I'm using a passive attenuator, Splix, use them in a lot of my videos, to attenuate the modulation and of patch out of VCF2 into linear FM on oscillator 2. This patch is going to heavily rely on the arpeggiator. So first thing we're going to do, though, is turn the uh, rate of the arpeggiator all the way down. Make sure it's in arpeggiator mode, switch it into random play mode, and uh, I'll use two octave mode. That's a lot of modes. Okay, VCA in drone mode, yet another mode, and bring up oscillator 2 in the mixer, and the splits will control the amount of uh, FM modulation, not getting anything, oh, I forgot to turn up the resonance on filter 2, remember the cutoff knob will control the frequency of both of the filters, with spacing controlling the um, uh, frequency of oscillator 1 by itself. All right, using the cutoff knob to dial in the tone for oscillator 2 first. Oh boy, that's really cool. Okay, gonna turn off oscillator 2 in the mixer, turn up oscillator 1, and do the same with it, but using the spacing knob. Cool. Yeah, like that. All right, but let's get into some global settings here. Turn on good old round robin mode, which is a G sharp 2, D sharp 0. And I'm just going to turn it on, which is E0. And now I'm going to put the VCA into split mode. Split VCA mode allows you to control both VCAs with independent envelope generators. So the filter envelope generator is controlling the filter, but also the left VCA. And we're not going to be using any envelope modulation on the filter because that would obviously modulate the frequency of our LFOs. So make sure the envelope amount knob on your filter is turned down to zero. Next, I'm going to patch out of the uh, mod bay, making sure I've got pulse wave selected. And wave out into uh, trigger input on the um, uh, filter, our left side envelope generator. Okay, that's working out great. Uh, this next step may be a bit redundant, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to sync the um, LFO to the arpeggiator. So patch um, gate out of the arpeggiator, the sync input on the mod bay. 
Now that pulse from the LFO sounds great, but I want something more random and interesting, so I'm going to patch out of the um, LFO into an attenuator. And out of the attenuator, once I find a cable, and I'm going to patch into the right input on the LFO. Yep, and you can hear that as clear as day. The triangle LFO is now modulating our pulse LFO, so we're getting some random rhythms being introduced. So now I'm going to patch the square LFO into this other attenuator down here, and I'm going to invert it slightly. So it's kind of a mirror image of our first attenuator, and patch that into the right input on the um, arpeggiator. And let's try playing something. Okay, that's kind of cool. Let's adjust the sound a bit. So notice we're getting a trigger on our right VCA, but we haven't patched anything into the trigger input. That's because uh, that's being taken care of internally by the matriarch. The arpeggiator is normal to the amp envelope generator. Okay, and just monkeying around with the um, speed of our LFOs, in other words, the filter cutoff and the spacing to try to get some FM modulation I like. And let's add in some delay. Secret sauce. Ooh, that's a bit too much. I think just shy of 50% mix. And let's just do some tinkering. And of course, now we're into the best part of synthesis, just some experimentation until you get the sounds you're after. So I'm just making very tiny adjustments to um, the frequency of our LFOs as well as the amount modulating the um, oscillators. So to start, I want a slightly metallic sound. Oh, not like that. There we go. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. And I think the release time is too long on the envelopes. I'm just going to reduce that by quite a bit. So it's a little bit more plucky. Cool, I like the sound of that. Now if you want some of the pitch to be introduced, you can just slow down your LFO a bit. So it's now it's a subtler FM. And of course, if you want your FM or pitch to be more consistent, you can use key tracking to, well, key track the LFO. And that will keep the uh, frequency modulation in line with the oscillators. In one of the deep dive filter videos I did a while back, I talked about how it's tricky to get an old school static mod wave FM sound. This is obviously a much easier way to do it than the convoluted way I did it in the other video. Of course, using this method, we lose the filter from our audio path, so it will only work in situations that you don't need a filter. Okay, so we're getting a pretty interesting patch with some uh, random generated rhythms and uh, nice metallic FM sounds. Let's talk about a few other things we can do with this patch. If you want even more random crazy rhythms, we can, um, instead of attenuating our um, LFO, which is modulating the rate, we can put it into the CV control for the attenuator. Because that's a square wave modulating the um, attenuator now, we're getting absolute highs and absolute lows. Now, if we do the same thing with the um, triangle LFO, we'll get accelerating and decelerating pulses. Cool. Let's put that back where it was. And now I'm going to go for a less bizarre percussive sound with our FM and go for something a little bit more consonant more glassy FM sounds, which means we need a faster LFO, so speeding up the cutoff, or turning up the cutoff, which is speeding up our LFOs. And we're moving away from metallic percussion to a more glassy tone. Getting there. 
And in a situation like this, I think keyboard tracking, I'm going to put it to full so it remains consistent. And I'm going to drop this oscillator down an octave so it's a bit warmer. And now I'm going to add some reverb. Yeah, that sounds great. And for some finishing touches, I'm just going to slow down the attack of both envelope generators. And that will about do it for this patch. I'm just going to jam out or let this one play for a little bit, and then we'll get on to the next one. Alright, so the matriarch filter can be used to create sign LFOs, two of them. May not be the slowest LFOs, but they still work out great. Next idea is an obvious one, why not simply loop an envelope generator? Instead of getting into a bunch of theory, let's just jump in and do it. All we have to do is patch the envelope end out into the trigger input, and you're done. Instant unipolar LFO. And there it is, a uh, two-stage looping envelope. So, uh, attack and release are going to control the rise and fall time of our LFO. While in looping mode, the matriarch's going to ignore this sustain stage, as you can see. Has no effect. And let me just speed this thing up, and I'll show you. Decay, same thing, no effect. So obviously we're getting different wave shapes than we'd get with a traditional LFO. But if you want a more traditional ramp LFO, for instance, just turn attack up high and um, release to zero. There we go, we're getting a logarithmic ramp. Now if we invert that, well, you see, we're going to get a saw. Now if attack and release are at about the same time, we'll get close to a triangle. Now you can see that the uh, envelope shape on the matriarch is logarithmic exponential. So we can't get a triangle in the strictest sense, but variety's good. Okay, so let's see what we can come up with using these envelope generators as LFOs. So I guess the first step is to set up a patch and use up all the actual LFOs, and then use the cycling envelope LFOs for finishing touches. So let's start with a basic stereo drone and go from there. So I'm going to use both of the LFOs to modulate the VCA. So I'm just patching a um, triangle LFO into an attenuator and into the CV input for VCA channel 2. And I'm going to use the uh, sine oscillator uh, from the mod bay to modulate the other VCA. Patching it into an attenuator, making sure we got it set to sine. And out of the attenuator, obviously, into uh, the VCA CV input. The LFOs modulating the uh, VCAs will obviously modulate the volume of our drone. I want to use two different LFOs to do this so the left and right sides will swell and fall at different speeds and amplitudes. So Matriarch should be in drone mode for this and bring up the attenuators to start the modulation. Cool. So there we have it. Left and right sides being modulated independently. And I'll just find try to find a sort of tempo or sound that I like to start with. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and I think I'm going to want stereo oscillators or different oscillators on either side. So I'm going to patch the output of the mixer into VCF input 1 and turn up uh, oscillators 1 and 2 in the mixer, making sure that oscillators 3 and 4 are off. 
And then I'm going to grab two cables and patch the wave out of oscillators three and four into this little Splix, um, which is now going to be acting as a mixer. And I'll uh, find the midway point on that and patch that into uh, VCF channel two. So now we've got oscillators one and two on one side and three and four on the other. Okay, let's dial in some tones here. So I think I'm going to mess around with the octaves of the oscillators. And I'm going to switch them all to pulse waves. And I guess just for variety, I'll put oscillator 2 to uh, narrow pulse. And I'm going to go into global settings again and just make sure round robin mode is still turned on. So that's uh, G sharp 2, D sharp 0, and E0 for on. And I'll just play a chord so we can hear the four different oscillators. Oh, got to put it in four voice mode. There we go. Round Robin won't uh, rotate the voices until I start the arpeggiator or play the keyboard, but we've got it set up at least. So there's our basic patch. Let's make sure both envelope generators are looping, and we'll use them to add some modulation and bring it to life. I'm going to use both these envelopes to do a lot of modulation, so I'm going to patch both of them into a malt. So um, envelope 1 is patched into the malt on the right, and I'll patch envelope 2 out into the um, malt on the left. Let's set up some uh, timbre changes for our oscillators and modulate the pulse width of a few of the oscillators. I'll patch out of the mold to the pulse width CV input on oscillator one. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So out of the second mold, and we'll go into the pulse width for oscillator three. And I'm gonna set oscillator four to narrow pulse so it mirrors oscillator two. And I'm going to experiment a little bit with the speed and shape of our envelope oscillators. I'll uh, set one to a shorter attack and longer release and do the opposite for the other. Cool. Okay. So we should modulate some other things. Let's start with the filter. So out of the um, malt into channel one of the filter. Going to bring the cutoff down to around 12 o'clock. And we'll use the other LFO to modulate the other filter. So out of our second malt into VCF2 CV input. And I think we're going to need some rhythmic variations. So out of the malt into an attenuator. And out of the attenuator we will go into the rate input of our sine LFO. So obviously the attenuator will control the amount of rate modulation. Try that. Maybe a little less. Cool. Now I want to do the same thing on the other side. We're obviously out of attenuators, so I'm going to use a splix again, this time just with one channel patch, so it's acting as an attenuator. And there we go. Cool. Cool, that's already starting to sound quite a bit more interesting. So I think all we have to do now is add our delay to matriarch secret sauce start with 50 percent delay or 12 o'clock on the mix dial and put it in ping pong mode awesome okay and let's add just a touch of reverb awesome let's hear what it sounds like So this patch works pretty well just as keys, but I designed it to work with the arpeggiator, so let's turn that on. Awesome, that sounds great. Okay, just gonna play for a little bit. Thank you. 
All right. I really like that patch. I'm definitely going to revisit it. It has a ton of potential. But let's get on to the last patch of the video. And this is one of my favorite ideas. As mentioned, it was inspired by a conversation I had with one of the subscribers to the channel. So thanks, Mark, for the great idea. We're going to use a VCO as an LFO. So the first step, of course, is to get our VCO to the lowest frequency that we can. We, of course, have easy control of the octaves with the length knob or octave knob. We also can change the keyboard range by holding shift and hitting the play button. And, of course, we've got our frequency knob as well. Now, matrix default is a fifth in either direction, but we can change that if we go into global settings and hit C sharp one. Sometimes parameters without group select keys get stuck, so you can fix that by hitting the high A sharp key. And we're going to go for full range, which is F3. Now we have two octave range with our frequency knob. All right, we're pretty low now. Sounds like we're definitely getting close to LFO range. I've got oscillator 4 set to a pulse wave so we can use it as a trigger. I'm going to patch the oscillator wave out to a scope and also the trigger input on our envelope generator. Okay, there's our oscillator sending a pulse or gate signal to our envelope. It's definitely not audio rate, but it's still pretty quick. So let's slow this thing down even more. We can use the attenuator to send a CV offset to the pitch input of the oscillator. Turn the attenuator fully clockwise. Yep, and there we go. We got a nice slow LFO. But we do have a slight issue. Our LFO is going to change its rate depending on where we are on the keyboard. Yeah. Now, we could use this to our advantage. It's not like we never key track LFOs. Sometimes that's useful. But I want this to behave like a standard LFO. So we got to go back into good old global settings. And the easiest way to solve this problem is going to be simply to turn the local keyboard control off. So that's C sharp 2 and uh, D sharp 1 and um, C0. Now, if you hit a key on the keyboard, nothing's going to happen. But, of course, we want to be able to play different notes, so simply patch the keyboard CV out into oscillator 1 input. And the matrix internal routing will take care of the rest. Let's just shift up the octaves. And there we go. We've got a consistent LFO speed and we've regained control of our keyboard. All right, that's kind of exciting. If we use a pulse VCO or two or three or even four, I guess, we could have multiple clock or gates on the matriarch. Could be great for percussive or drum programming. In fact, I really like that idea and I think I'm going to try it out, but I'm going to save it for another video. For now, I want to try something else, but I also really want to compare the speed of our new VCO LFO to one of the onboard LFOs and see how close they are. So I've got the um, LFO patched into the pitch of oscillator 1 now. I'm going to switch it over to a triangle wave. Yeah, that's definitely LFO rate. So let's compare it to the um, triangle LFO in the utility section. So I'll just patch triangle LFO out into the uh, pitch input of oscillator 2 so we can compare the speeds. Get these cables out of the way so we can see what's going on. And uh, so we can make a clear comparison. I'm going to patch... Um, each of the uh, waves directly into VCAs. So oscillator one, which is our makeshift LFO is on the left and oscillator two, which is our utility LFO is on the right. Okay, well, we don't even need the scope for this. It's pretty clear that the actual LFO is quite a bit slower than our VCO LFO. VCO is the red one on the scope. The uh, LFO is the other one. I don't know what color that is. I'm colorblind. But anyway, I've got another idea how we can fix this. Attenuators 1 and 2 on the matriarch are linked if there's nothing patched into the input of attenuator 2. In those cases, attenuator 2 will act as an offset, which it's already doing. But it will also offset attenuator 1. And there we go. Worked like a charm. So our VCO oscillator is now quite a bit slower than the um, actual LFO. Let's just have a listen. Yeah, they're both rising. But the LFOs, oh yeah, it's already falling while the VCO LFO is still rising. So 
We did it. We figured out how to make an ultra slow LFO out of a VCO on the matriarch. Super cool. So of course the other super cool thing is we have control over the wave shapes for each of the oscillators obviously so we've got a slow triangle a slow ramp and two slow pulses if we want them awesome and we can control the rate of our lfo with the octave dial and frequency knob so we don't always have to have a super slow one if we don't want it here's a pretty good saw lfo nice all right, we figured it out, so let's get patching. Okay, I haven't really planned anything yet, so I'm just gonna wing it. So this would be like a real world situation. I got a patch going, I've used up all my LFOs, but now I know I can use a VCO as an LFO in a pinch. So I'm gonna go into global settings first though and just reset everything to defaults because I forgot what I've done. And I'm gonna start with some VCA modulation using the triangle LFO. So I'm gonna patch that into um, the molt out of the molt into an attenuator, which I'll use to invert it, and then uh, out of the molt into VCA CV input for channel one, and out of the attenuator into the other VCA CV input. And let's go into drone mode. And I think I'm just gonna start with one oscillator, just use oscillator one for now, speed up the LFO and invert my um, triangle wave. So we're gonna get panning from left to right. Cool, so far so good. All right, just gonna play a C minor to get us started. And fire up the arpeggiator. And dial in some envelope settings. I think I'm gonna start with a plucky sound with a long filter release. That's okay. But I'm not really crazy about the VCA attack. The filter sounds okay, but the VCA attack's being obscured by the um, triangle LFO modulation. So I'm going to pull that out for a second. And I'm going to use some splixes or passive mixers again and patch that into the VCA and into the um, envelope out as well as the uh, triangle LFO out. So we're getting a cross between both envelope and um, LFO modulation. So hopefully that will clear up the attack, but keep that nice swell happening. Okay, that's already much cleaner. Let's just try to find a good balance between um, envelope modulation as well as uh, the uh, triangle LFO modulation. Let's just envelope. That sounds good. I think we're getting there. I really like the VCAs in drone mode for a patch like this. You can hear the oscillators ring through. Almost sounds polyphonic. But if I switch to another VCA mode, well, you heard it. More percussive. Good for a lot of things, but I'm going to stick with drone mode. Okay, that's a good enough start. We've used up one LFO. Let's work a little bit on our oscillators. Just gonna put them in random octaves for now. I'll stick with just oscillator one. And I'll get the arpeggiator going again. And I'm gonna use our LFO to modulate um, pulse width, I guess, of oscillator one. I think I'll use the step triangle. And bring up the rate. Not hearing it, oh, because I haven't turned on pulse width. There we go. So now we're getting timbre changes with almost every new note. Okay, that sounds pretty good, but I've lost a lot of my VCA modulation, so I'm just going to add a little bit more triangle into the mix. I think the filter modulation is getting in the way, so I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Might as well just turn it off so I can dial in my VCA modulation. That's better. And I want a gentler sound, I think, so I'm going to slow down the attack and bring up the decay. That's nice. And let's slow down the arpeggiator. And I'm 
going to add a little bit more envelope to uh, this side. There, we'll add in a little bit more filter modulation again, just a tiny bit. Okay, this is really starting to sound a lot more musical. So let's get our VCO LFO into the mix. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it to do some AM modulation. So I'm going to use my attenuator as a VCA, so patching the mixer into the attenuator and out of the mixer go back into the filter. I'll set the attenuator at zero, so our VCA is closed. I'm going to use oscillator 4 as an LFO again, so I'm going to offset its pitch to bring the down to LFO range again with the, the attenuator. Crank that fully to the left. I'm going to go into global settings again and hit C sharp 1, which is frequency knob range, and F3. Set it to its max, but it's stuck again. So A sharp first and C sharp one. There we go. Now it's working. And I'll bring the frequency to its lowest to start. Get the arpeggiator going. And now I gotta patch the um, LFO into our new VCA. So C V in on the attenuator. And bring up oscillator one in the mixer. And introduce some AM modulation. Let's bring up the rate of our LFO. There we go. We got a little vibrato happening, or a lot of vibrato. Oh, that sounds cool. So I'm sure you hear this, but right now the AM modulation is only happening on one side. That's because at the moment, the way things are patched, our filter is still in stereo mode. So our AM modulation is only happening to VCF1. So that's an easy enough thing to fix. All we have to do is switch our filter into um, series mode. There we go. And let's find a nice amount of AM. That's cool. And let's use spacing to roll off a little bit of the lows and bring our cutoff down a little bit so we get a gentler sound and add a little bit more filter modulation. Adjust our envelope. That's cool. It's too bright though, so less filter modulation. And a little bit more amplitude modulation so we don't lose our vibrato. There. Oh, I like that. All right, things are starting to come together. We've got stereo panning from our triangle LFO, timbre modulation from the step triangle, and tremolo from our makeshift LFO. Okay, so let's add in another oscillator. Let's bring in oscillator 2. Oh, I like it when it's nice and high up like that. Let's just hear it by itself. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'm curious what this would sound like as a keys patch. I like the arpeggiator, but it's just curious. So let's turn off that arpeggiator, flip it into two voice paraphonic mode, and uh, turn down oscillator two and turn up oscillator three. So oscillator one and three will be our two voices. In uh, duophonic mode, oscillators 1 and 2 count as voice 1, and oscillators 3 and 4 count as voice 2. So, we'll just use 1 and 3. That's nice. Let's add in some delay. Oh, that's a bit too much. Bring down the feedback. A nice sad pad. Cool, that works pretty well as keys. But I'm gonna go back to the arpeggiator. I think I'm getting an idea of what I wanna do now. But first I wanna to check to see how much the um, uh, key tracking is affecting the rate of the uh, tremolo LFO. Mm -hmm. 
That sounds really cool. It's hard to tell with the delay, though. Yep, it's definitely affecting it. So I'm going to sort that out, but first I'm going to bring down the volume of Oscillator 3, bring up Oscillator 2, and switch it back into unison mode. Because we're going to be using arpeggiators, I think, and I'm going to go into global settings. Last time I turned off local keyboard control to stop the VCO LFO thing from key tracking. This time I'm going to turn off the local ARP control. So that's C-sharp 2 and F-sharp uh, 1 and C-0. So for this to work, we want to get our pitch information from our um, arpeggiator now and not the keyboard. So we're going to patch CV out of the arpeggiator into pitch input of oscillator 1. Okay, that's working. Our oscillator is getting pitch information from our arpeggiator. But since we've detached the arpeggiator from the synth engine, we're not getting any gate signals. Uh, I'll fix that in a minute. First, I want to just have a listen to the tremolo LFO and make sure things are working the way I was hoping. Bring up the cutoff just so it's easier to hear. Yep, and it seems the tremolo rate is staying consistent, so that's working. Great. Just to be safe, I could patch a dead patch, just a cable that's not patched to anything, into the pitch input of oscillator 3, but it seems to be working, so now I'm just going to patch the gate into the trigger input of our envelope. Yeah, it's a bit bright, so I'm going to bring down the um, filter. Now I've got a really good idea of what I want this patch to sound like. This is totally reminding me of John Carpenter movies, like Escape to New York and Halloween and 70s horror movies. So that is now going to be the goal for this patch, create a John Carpenter style synth patch. Okay, but we're not really using oscillator 3 for anything, so why not use it as another LFO? So I'm going to move the offset over to the input of oscillator 3, which will of course also affect oscillator 4. I'm going to switch it down to a triangle wave. So now we have two VCO LFOs. I'm going to keep 4 patched the way it is. And I think I'm going to use oscillator 3 to modulate the filter. Don't have any more attenuators, so I'm going to grab another Splix. Which, of course, is you can use any attenuator. I'm just using these because they're cheap. And patching wave out into the cutoff of um, filter 2, which, of course, is our low-pass cutoff because we're in series mode. Oh, that sounds great. Oh, I wish I made this video a couple weeks ago in time for Halloween. Total Michael Myers. And let's dial in some more filter modulation from our triangle VCO LFO. It's a bit much. Hmm. There we go. So we've learned how to use the matrix filter as an LFO, learned how to use the envelope generators as LFOs, and now VCOs as LFOs, which really expands the capabilities of the matriarch, opens the doors to a ton of new possibilities. I'm really going to have to experiment with that um, VCO as separate clocks idea. But I think that'll about do it for this video. I'm going to mess around with this patch a bit, and I think I'm going to use it to make a quick 70s style horror patch that I'll use in the intro of this video. So I guess you've already heard it by this point. Anyway, so I'm just going to jam out for a bit. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something.